Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hannah Betzel. I'm an abstract artist in Athens, Georgia. Today I want to show you one way that I gather color inspiration and that is in my traveler's notebook. This is a Midori traveler's notebook. I've got a few inserts in here. One I use for scribbling down random thoughts and ideas and the other is for color inspiration. One place that I find color inspiration quite often are children's books. Um, I love finding vintage children's books especially. This is one that I picked up recently called I Can Fly. It's a little golden book. I found this at Goodwill actually. So that's a really good spot to go look for children's, book, children's books, especially vintage. Go to your thrift shops, go to Goodwill. Goodwill always has a huge selection of books. Um, I found this one as well and I love the colors in this one. I think that's going to be fun to dig into. And I also took some from my kids. I have two little boys that are um, seven and nine and so I grabbed some of their books and sometimes I use uh, use them as an excuse to buy children's books that I really like the colors in so that's always fun. Good old classic Paddington Bear and I may or may not use all of these books in today's uh, today's video but I just wanted to show you a few that I have on hand that I'm going to flip through. This one is called I Want My Hat Back and it's this silly little sort of deadpan bear who just wants his hat back. And I love the colors and it's super simple. And this is Ada Twist Scientist. This one's really busy and colorful. Um, that's going to be interesting to flip through and see what we find. And then of course we've got their favorite right now which is Pokemon. This is the Deluxe Essential Handbook and there's so much in here. So I think what I'll do is just kind of flip through, land on a page and then find one and we will gather a uh, color palette from that. What I'm working with today are these Hemi paints, Maya Hemi gouache paint. I bought this on Amazon. I've only used it a couple of times. I haven't used it in anything spectacular, but they're, uh, it's a really cool little case. It actually came with a palette too, which is I think at the sink right now, but they are a gel gouache. There are 18 colors in here, two of which are white, and I believe they're the same white. Um, so they're really, I guess, 17 colors technically. But there's a lot to work with and they're good mixing colors. So oh, one more thing that you will need when you go to find your color palettes, this is a very high tech tool that I invented. It's a pipe cleaner and I will show you in a little bit how we're gonna use that. Okay, let's flip through this Pokemon book first. There are so many characters in here. So what I'm gonna do is narrow it down to these two characters. I love those purples. And then Ada Twist Scientist has a ton of colors. Um, and just on one page, there's so many colors. So I'm gonna take my little high tech tool that I made, I call it a color finder. And uh, I'm going to move it around on the page to sort of hone in on some really specific colors and narrow things down a little bit. So instead of being overwhelmed by trying to find colors throughout the whole page, I just move it around and, and locate a couple of them that I like. Uh, this book is going to be a little bit more challenging. I really like it. Um, there's just, it's mostly browns and greens. So finding two or three colors or three to four colors in that is going to be a bit of a challenge. I think I'm going to settle on this little frog. I really like him. And then we've got Paddington. This is another one, sort of like Ada Twist Scientist, that has a ton of colors. And then you can see me use the tool here in a little bit. I kind of like the first page that I saw. It's something drew my eye there, and I'll show you that in a minute here. And um, I really like that clock up there. That has some interesting colors there. But this, I love this lady's orange hair and that little boy's sort of buttery yellow hat. That's really pretty. So I think that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to gather some color inspiration from that one little section. And then Frog and Toad are friends. I loved these books when I was little. And there was even a cartoon, I believe, uh, that went along with these books. And I've always loved the colors here. And I thought this would be another fun one, uh, a challenging one really, to gather some color inspiration from to get a variety of colors. And this book has 
pretty much the same colors throughout the whole entire book. It's sort of this light aqua color, a darker sort of sea foam green. And I like this page because it has a really pretty purple with some red streaks in it and that bright orange contrasting color. It's gonna look pretty with that blue. This book was so fun. Um, I love these vintage illustrations and the colors were so bright and vivid. That pink and red combo is really pretty. Definitely one to use the color finder tool. Look at that pink and red and orange. Oh, it's so good. It's kind of a red orange. That's one of my favorite colors, that sort of poppy red orange. But this is something different that I would normally go for. I'm gonna go for these colors. These are the tools I'm using. I ended up not using that big brush, but uh, what I'm using right now is a little tiny spatula. I like to mix my gouache with this instead of my brushes because the gouache can, it tends to get up into the ferrule of the brush and can really mess up your brushes if you don't clean it really well. It's really hard to get paint out of the ferrule once it's in there. So I like using this little sort of squeegee spatula tool to mix my gouache. And then I go in with my brush. Um, and I ended up using only the smaller brush of the two. It's probably a half inch wide, but use whatever you have on hand if you decide to go for this. So I'm mixing up all my colors here. These gouache paints mix really well. And there's a, a big enough range of colors that you can get pretty much anything you want. Now I'm getting as close as I can to the colors that I see on the page. That sort of maroon brick red is a little bit darker than the color of the girl's dress in the picture, but I really like it. I think it's nice to have something really dark to sort of ground these other colors. How pretty is that though? I love it. That coral color at the very bottom is, uh, I found that in her cheeks and I just thought that was the prettiest little color. I'm writing down the title of the book, the author and the illustrator, because I want to go back and uh, any of these color palettes that I decide that I really like, I want to go back and see what other things they've illustrated and see if there are other color palettes from their illustrations that I wanna work with. Now this was a fun one. I love these colors. The sort of a sandy color in, in Toad's face is really nice. That dark brown jacket was in Frog's jacket, or that dark brown color was in Frog's jacket. And then that pale sort of celery green was the lighter shade on Frog. So I changed my lighting situation. Uh, I stopped working in the evening and the next day I decided to get right up to a window to have some better lighting so the colors were a little bit uh, clearer. Let's get a little close up. Look at that buttery yellow. How pretty is that? And we've got some gray to ground those brighter colors. The colors in this book, this is Paddington Bear, um, I find them very comforting. They're bright and cheerful but they're uh, they're subdued enough, they're, they're calm enough to be such a comforting book. Very, it matches the story really, really well. It's happy and cheerful, but calm and comforting at the same time. I love this blue. This blue with the, uh, the orange at the top are really, really nice. Let's write down the title and the author and illustrator. I would like to go back and look up this illustrator to see what else they've done. Now this one was going to be challenging for me. Um, there are very few colors and they're, they're used throughout the entire book. This purple I only found on a few pages, but that blue and orange and seafoam green are on every page of the book. And that green looked a little dark to me at first, so I held it up to the manatee to see if I was on track with it. And I think it's pretty close to the darker shades in the manatee. It just looks really dark compared to the white that it's on right there. And this purple, it got a little dark with it at first, and uh, it needed some purpley or some red streaks in it to match what was on the boat. You'll see here in a second. 
It's so pretty. Kind of a smoky purple with hints of red in it. And that little character was actually bright orange, but looks much darker. It looks more, more red, I guess, next to the purple in the book. But those colors even match the, the cover. I could add pink in there too. That'd be a nice compliment. I want my hat back. Now this one was challenging. I work with a lot of color. So narrowing down on, or narrowing in on very like a very simple natural color palette is challenging, but I love this little frog. That dark chocolate brown of the of the water and the his green skin. There's like a a pale green in there and there's a darker olive in his skin. So we are gonna go with that. And this ends up being one of my favorite palettes. I really like this. These are not colors I would normally choose to work with, but I'm interested in, uh, in trying to create an abstract based off of this palette. Love it. That little frog is so cute. Okay, Ada Twist Scientist, here we go. Look at all the stuff that's in this book. There's so much to see. So many tiny little things everywhere. And so much color. So I'm really drawn to that red. and But, but I've used it in several, or in a few palettes already. So I don't know if I'm going to pick it, but... I don't think I've used a pink and red yet. So here we go. Let's use this pink and red and green and her brown skin and her little yellow hair bow. They're all so pretty. So my previous palette was not quite dry yet. So I'm gonna use this little heat tool to get everything dry. I like this better than a hair dryer, although a hair dryer works just fine. This heat tool is, it gets super hot. So you definitely wouldn't want your kids messing with it. Um, but it dries things so quickly. All right, let's pin this little notebook down and start mixing our colors. I've got my colors all ready to go. I like to mix all my colors ahead of time, um, at least for a project like this. When I'm painting an abstract, I don't mix ahead of time. But for um, color palettes like this, I go ahead and get them all mixed up and then I can just throw them all down real quick. Look at these colors though, it's so pretty. It's so much, um, they're just so vibrant. There's, they all stand out though. So I really like adding this pink to sort of bring them all down a notch. I think it would be too much. If there were one more really electric, like bright color, bold color in there, I think it would be too much. The pink really calms things down a little bit. I like all of these, like this whole series of books, The Ada Twist Scientist, there's another one, um, Iggy Peck Architect that I want to paint from as well. So I chose these two little characters in the Pokemon book. I, I don't know who the artist is for all the Pokemon characters. I'm sure there's more than one artist, but I have no idea. That's something I need to look into, but um, I really love these colors. I did not, I'm not a big purple fan in general, but I really like these two colors. They're kind of smoky, um, really calm purples. Like there's that deep plum and then a sort of a smoky lavender, I guess. I don't know what you would call that. But I like this combination of colors. I think it'd make a great painting. Let's do a final flip through. There we go. So I'm really excited about these colors. I, I love these palettes. These aren't colors that I would normally think to put together on my own, but I'm really, I really wanna get into the studio now and, and start mixing up these colors and throwing them on a big canvas and seeing what I can do uh, to create an abstract with these. Okay, 
Okay, so that is my color inspiration. It's one way I gather inspiration. If you want to see me paint abstracts that are inspired by these paint palettes, let me know in the comments below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Share this with your friends if you find it helpful. And uh, let me know if you wanna see more color palette inspiration. All right, thanks for watching.